Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll discuss about Newton's laws of motion. Newton's laws of motion helps in analyzing the relationship between the forces which are applied to the human body and their consequences on a human motion and human posture. Okay, there are three Newton's laws of motion. The first law is known as law of inertia. The second law is known as law of acceleration and the third law is known as law of action reaction the first law is known as is also known as law of inertia now we'll define the first law with respect to linear motion with respect to rotatory motion what is with respect to linear motion it is defined as a body is at rest or at constant linear velocity except when compelled by an external force to change its state. That is, this means an external force is required to start or to stop, to accelerate or decelerate or alter the direction of the linear motion. Now, the first law with respect to rotatory motion is defined as a body is at rest or at constant angular or rotatory rotational rotational velocity occurring around an axis of rotation unless compelled by an external torque to change its state okay guys now this means the external torque what is torque that the strength of the rotation produced by the force couple is known as torque okay an external torque is required to start or to stop or accelerate or decelerate or alter the direction of the rotatory motion okay irrespective of the motion whether it's a linear motion or a rotatory motion the newton's law, first law states that a body is in a case of equilibrium okay there are two types of equilibrium a static equilibrium and the dynamic equilibrium a body is said to be in static equilibrium when the linear and the rotational velocities are zero the linear and rotational velocities are zero okay that is the body is not moving that is the body is at rest with respect to dynamic equilibrium a body is said to be in dynamic equilibrium when the linear and the rotational velocities are not zero but they are constant here the linear and rotational velocities are not equal to zero but constant that is the body is in uh, motion okay now in, in all cases of equilibrium whether it's a static or a dynamic equilibrium it states that or uh, in all these cases of this equilibrium whether the ang linear or or the angular accelerations which are acting on the body remains zero you know in this in this equilibrium whether it's a static or dynamic the linear and rotational or angular angular accelerations remains zero 
okay as i said the first law of newton is also known as law of inertia what is inertia inertia is related to related to the amount of energy required to alter the to alter the velocity of a body the inertia of a body is directly proportional to its mass okay for example if you uh, the uh, inertia of a body for example if you take uh, if more energy is required to start up or slow down a moving 7 kg dumbbell than a 5 kg dumbbell a 7 kg dumbbell is greater than a 5 kg dumbbell hence more energy is required to start up or slow down that moving dumbbell okay this is all about the newton's first law guys okay now we will discuss about the newton's second law of motion that is law of acceleration okay before going into law of acceleration i will define some of the terms guys they are what is acceleration what is acceleration what is force what is torque okay now acceleration is change in velocity per unit time is known as acceleration whereas force it is a push or a pull exerted on a body or on a segment okay what is torque the strength of the rotation produced by the force couple is known as torque now this side is rep represents the law of acceleration law with respect to that of the linear motion and this side represents with respect to that of the angular motion okay now linear acceleration is the ag acceleration of a translating segment okay now the linear acceleration of a body is directly proportional to the force causing it and it takes place in the same direction in which the force acts and the linear acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the up body as the mass of the body increases the linear acceleration decreases and vice versa okay the newton's second law with respect to the linear motion okay generates an equation which is related to force mass and acceleration okay and it is considered as cause and effect relationship cause and effect relationship for example the generated equation is represented in this way that is the net force f is equal to mass into acceleration the left part of the equation that is the net force is considered as a cause and the right side of the equation that is mass into acceleration is considered as the effect this net forces or some of the forces will cause an effect okay now if the net forces or some of the forces are equal to zero if this is equal to zero then acceleration is equal to zero then the body is set to be in linear equilibrium okay that is not moving that this again depicts the newton's first law that is law of inertia but the newton's law of acceleration states that the net forces produces acceleration and the body accelerates in the direction of the resultant force hence the body is not in equilibrium okay the this is with uh, all about the law of acceleration with respect to linear motion now let us see law of acceleration with respect to angular motion as i uh, uh, defined all these terms now what is angular acceleration angular acceleration is the acceleration of a rotating segment around an axis okay now angular acceleration of a body is directly proportional to torque causing it and it takes place in the same 
rotatory direction in which the torque acts and angular acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass moment of inertia what is this mass moment of inertia the mass moment of inertia of a body is a quantity that indicates its resistance this is very important guys that indicates its resistance to a change in angular velocity angular velocity is the velocity of a rotating segment around an axis okay and the newton's second law with respect to that of the angular motion generates an equation which is related to the torque mass moment of inertia which is represented as i capital i and angular acceleration that is which is represented as alpha okay now if you take this first before going to, into this equation now let us say as i said torque the strength of the rotation produced by the force couple is known as torque in the musculoskeletal system the primary producers of torque are muscles for example if you take the biceps brachii muscle its action is shoulder flexion elbow flexion and a strong supinator okay now this biceps brachii in a contracting states produce an internal flexion torque at the elbow okay this is one of the example of the torque guys okay now let us come back to the equation this is the equation that is this represents the sum or net torques acting to rotate a body okay and now this represents the mass moment of inertia into alpha which is known as angular acceleration okay guys this is about the law of acceleration with respect to linear motion with respect to the angular motion now the next law and the final law is the third law of newton's law of motion that is newton's law of action reaction newton's law of action reaction states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction okay for example if you take the gate cycle for the uh, stance uh, phase uh, it consists of heel strike foot flat mid stance heel off and toe off now if you take the only the heel strike part of the stance phase in which the there will be an certain hip flexion slight uh, knee flexion and ankle in dorsiflexion so that the heel of the foot strikes the ground okay now when the foot heel of the foot strikes the ground it exerts a force the whole lower limb exerts a force in a direction towards the ground this is represented in this direction okay now when the foot exerts this force the ground exerts an opposite force towards the foot that is known as ground reaction force and it is of equal magnitude and it's of equal amount to that of the foot exerted on the ground this is one example and the newton's third law also has an angular equivalent it also has an angular equivalent for example during an knee isometric exercise for example internal and external torques are equal these are equal and in opposite rotatory directions okay in short this is about the third law of uh, newton's law of motion guys that is action reaction okay guys this is all about the three laws of motion that is uh, law of uh, inertia law of acceleration law of action reaction if you uh, like this video please subscribe to my channel and share with your friends if you have any doubts do comment in the comment section guys thanks for watching guys thank you